All right, so this is number 22. It's supposed to be the hardest question on the test probably in terms of math, right? So we're at the last question in the hard module. So they're in order of difficulty. It's supposed to be the hardest one and uh, it's in the hard module. So there you go, double hard. Uh, I actually think this is much easier than number 21. And um, it, it, this goes to show that as you get to the end of the section, you know, what is hard is kind of relative a little bit to you and to the strategies that you know. So feel free to skip around. You don't need to just go in order. As soon as you start hitting ones that you have no idea what to do, just skip ahead. You might be able to pick up some points at the end just from like the luck of what you get in the test. So the reason I don't think this is that hard is we can just solve the questions, the, the equations, and see what we get and see if they make sense. So with every time, every time we have a story, uh, remember, we don't want to read this and kind of generate the equation ourselves. We could. Some of you are going to be very good at that. But I like to take the four equations that I'm given and test them out. So let me show you what I mean. They tell us this 30-sided polygon has, each side is one of three lengths. The number of sides with length eight centimeters is five times the number of sides n with lengths three centimeters. That sounds confusing. There are six sides with length four centimeters. Which equation must be true for the values of n? Now, one thing that already makes me suspicious is all of these are equal to 30, which is the number of sides, not the perimeter of the polygon, right? So the perimeter is a measure of distance. So if we took all the sides that are eight centimeters, add them up with all the sides that are three and all the sides that are four, we'd have a perimeter. But that's not what they're asking for. So the fact that they're all equal to 30 tells me we're probably not using these dimensions. This is a trap. They are giving you information you do not need. That is rare on the SAT, very rare, especially in geometry questions, that we get information we don't use. But it's the hardest one, right? So part of what makes this one hard is that we need to understand the story and be able to kind of sort through all the data. But honestly, the math here is really easy. These are all single variable equations. We can solve these. You can put them in Desmos if you want, but right, if we just took 5n plus 6 equals 30, right, so that's minus 6 from both sides, we get 5n is equal to 24, and then we would divide by 5. So wait a minute here. n is... 24 divided by 5. n is 4.8. And what does n mean again? n is the number of sides with the length of 3 centimeters. How can you have 4.8 sides? That doesn't make any sense. Sides cannot be fractions. You can't have half of a side of something. That doesn't make any sense. So this answer just doesn't make sense. I don't even know what's going on. I just know that n has to be an integer. It has to be a whole number because that's the only way that polygons work. You can only have three, four, five, six, seven sides. You can't have five and a half sides. That doesn't make sense. So uh, there we go, 4.8 sides, can't do it, it's gone. Now if we do the same thing to b, right? So that would be six n is equal to 24. So now n is equal to four. Okay, that's at least a reasonable number, right? So Maybe we just kind of move on and see if the other ones are gonna give us reasonable numbers as well. Uh, so 8n plus 3n plus 4n, that's 15n. So if we divide, we would get n is two here. So that's also a reasonable number. Um, if we did that here, we'd have what? 40n plus 3n plus 24. So that's, oh my God, 43n is equal to six. So n is equal to 6 40 thirds? No, 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 no. That's also a decimal. I'm not even going to bother putting in the calculator. So right now, we only have two choices that even make any sort of sense. And if you're thinking about what I said before about how the, the dimensions themselves probably aren't going to be part of this equation because we're not thinking about perimeter. We're not interested in how the distance around this thing. It probably means that b is the answer. But we can also test out these two numbers by going back into the story. So it says... Uh, right here, let me highlight this. The number of sides with length eight centimeters is five times the number of sides n with length three centimeters. So I, again, I don't care about the eight and the three. I just care about the number of sides. So if n were were four, well, let's start two. Let's do the two first, right? If n were two, then that means there's two sides here. We can make a little chart, right? There's eight. The number, the centimeters is eight, uh, three and four, and the four we already know has six sides, right? So the number of sides, the number of centimeters. 
So if the number of three centimeter things is two, and then the number of eight centimeter sides is five times that, so that would be 10. So what does that add up to? 10 and two is 12 plus six is only 18, but we need it to be 30, right? It's a 30 sided figure. So that doesn't make any sense. So again, it's probably B, but let's just do it with the chart um, for the sake of completion here. Um, let me choose a new color. So centimeters and sides, we've got, like I said, eight, three, and four. We know the four uh, centimeter sides is six. They just tell us that. So now if N is four, right, that's the number of three centimeter sides. Then the eight centimeter size is five times that. So five times four is 20. And now add those up, right? 20 plus four is 24 plus six is 30. So there's my proof. Now, some of you probably could have gotten this just by kind of understanding that when they tell us this fact, five times the number of sides, we would just say, okay, that's five N and this is N. So five N plus, or here, let me do it this way. The number of eight centimeter sides is five N, the number of three centimeter sides is N, and the number of four centimeter sides they told us is just six. So right there, we would have six N plus six because we can combine these two, but we can't combine it with the six. Yeah, that's much easier. But, you know, I think for most of us, if we're watching this video, it's probably because this question was confusing, at least at first, reading it. And so I'm trying to give you other ways to think about things. And I think this is a great place to end on the math because um, some of you probably throughout your, you know, middle school career, your elementary school career so far, and maybe the beginning of your high school career, have uh, grown to hate math. You don't think of yourself as a good math student. But I do want to say that the math on the SAT, it's it's partly testing your knowledge, but it's also just testing your ability to problem solve. And so you might be good at that, even if you're not good at it in a math context. And so things like plug points into equations is a great way to problem solve consistently using a, a, the same path. But even here, we, can, we don't need to do it by the book. If you're confused by something, a lot of times having some sort of number is much more helpful, and there are multiple ways to get the right answer. So don't feel bad if you are, um, getting these right by the, a method that is not given to you by the College Board or the Khan Academy or whatever other method you're using to review. That's why I always defer to the strategies. If you are struggling with the math and the SAT, you need a new way to do things. And so all I want is to give you more options. Uh, that way you can find the, the option that works best for you. Sometimes it might not be more efficient than the more traditional way, but I'm, I'm just interested in getting you points. So if it gets you the points and overall you have more points using these strategies than you did before you used them, that's a win, right? So just try to improve as much as possible. That may involve some strategic skipping to get to questions like this at the end, but that's okay because we're just trying to maximize points. And there's no penalty for guessing. So always just, if you're gonna skip a question, pick a random letter, pick a random number, put it in, and you might even get the points anyway. But this one, even though it's last, I don't think this was the hardest question. So make sure you save time to at least skim over these last few questions. You might be able to pick up a few extra points that way.